This is day 20 of the May Vinyl Challenge. Start out on Instagram. It is on Instagram. May Vinyl Challenge 2024. I have a YouTube channel. And I don't really post on Instagram that much. So I thought, hey, I'll do this. I'll be on Instagram every single day. It'll force me to post on there. And then since I have a YouTube channel, I'll do a video as well. And I really liked it at first. And I only do this channel because I, I love it, right? I love telling these stories. I love interacting with people. You know, I do it my own way. You know, it is it is what it is. If you like it, I'm, I'm really, really happy you like it, you know. And I'm going to keep doing it. But I like to tell longer stories. I like to tie things around a theme. I like to maybe highlight an artist. I like to randomly pull records. All that stuff. I like. I want to do more deep dives into particular records, and I find that this format of doing it this month is is very short. Right, it's like a minute to three minutes, and a lot of times I'm not doing I think what I'm best at, and I've started to kind of kind of burn out on it. So starting today, I'm gonna stop doing the video portion of this. I can hear the applause everywhere. No, I'm just I'm kidding. I appreciate anybody who is who's followed along with this. Uh, especially Jesse M, who has done it with me and left comments every single day with his choices for uh, the given topic of the day. Really appreciate that. And don't stop just because I'm stopping on here. Um, you know, post on Instagram or comment on this video and keep this the comments going on this one, or send me a message. But yeah, I really really enjoy what you're doing and would love to keep following you. But yeah, so I'm going to end this one today, and I'm going to end with a really good record. Today's topic is a genre crossover record. And I must say the first one that came to mind was kind of an early one, I guess, for me. I knew the Super Suckers is kind of a, a punk band, you know, high energy rock and roll. And when they did, I think it was 1996, when they did Must Have Been High, I was like, wow, this is super cool. They're like doing a... Like, like a country album, you know, kind of rockabilly. Kind of, I don't know. It was really fun at the time and really, really enjoyed it. So that one came to mind. And then other bands or artists that, that sort of changed their style. I mean, the obvious one that I thought of was Radiohead going from um, uh, OK Computer into Kid A and Amnesiac. But I also thought about this album, Chrissy Hind, Vel Valve Bone Woe. I, th I think I've talked about it before. I'm not sure... It doesn't seem like an album that's gotten a lot of attention. Even articles I've read about Chrissy Hind, about the Pretenders, about you know her last couple records, they sometimes fail to mention this. And this record came out in 2019, so it's not, you know, that old. I think she's in, been on kind of a, a roll lately too. I mean, I love Hate for Sale. You know, that's a record you turn up in the car and just you know can just kind of like let her vent for you and like feed off of her energy. And it's got hooks and it just sounds really really good. And kind of amazing, you know, that she's making such high quality records now. And this is this is right up there with it. If not, I mean it might be better and you know, it might be the best thing she's done in the last I don't know, pick pick a decade or two. But it's a total departure. It's her with a jazz band, a pretty big jazz band, she calls the Valve Bone Woe Ensemble. And she's doing a lot of like jazz standards as a fool to to uh, want you, or maybe that was a Frank Sinatra song. I remember Dylan covering that too. But then there's also songs that are unexpected, like Caroline Now, the Beach Boys song, or yet another Ray Davis. I always want to say Ray Davies. It sounds cooler. I don't know. I, I always thought it was Ray Davies, and I, I guess I'm, I've been wrong all this time, and it's Ray Davis. But anyway, she does uh, No Return, um, a song that was on, I th uh, which, which King, uh, something else. And she just, she just really, really highlights her vocals, um, really smoky, kind of seductive sounding. And part of the reason, I guess, that she made this record, it says so on the back in the liner notes, is that she was really getting tired of not hearing melody in popular music and modern music. I have the same complaint. I have the same complaint. I would say most of the time when there's a new record, even one, some that people rave about, there is a complete absence of melody to the point when I get to the end of the record and somebody had asked me, like, quote a cool lyric from the record, I, uh, I, I would be hard-pressed to do that. 
really almost impossible for me a lot of times to get any of these songs stuck in my head, any kind of melody stuck in my head, anything that makes me want to go back to it and, and listen to it again, which, uh, yeah, that's a whole nother video. <laughs> I feel like I've been ranting a lot lately, but she understands the whole thing. So part of, part of the reason why I guess she wanted to make this record is to highlight the melodies and it has melodies galore. I'm glad that I stuck with the challenge enough to be able to highlight this record Chrissy Hind, Valve Bone Woe. It's a double record. It's beautiful. Great packaging. Definitely check it out when you get a chance. And thanks again, everybody, for sticking with me as I try new things with this channel. I'm going to keep doing that. But onward. Thanks. <laughs>